How does a smoke detector sense smoke in the air? The smoke detector contains a radioactive substance that gives off particles when it decays. These particles are used to sense the presence of the smoke. We shall learn more about radioactive decay as we explore the topic of radioactivity. The nucleus is composed of two types of particles or nucleons known as protons and neutrons. The number of protons in the nucleus known as the atomic number determines what element the atom represents in the periodic table. The atomic number is often denoted by the symbol Z. The total number of protons and neutrons determines the atomic mass number, which is denoted by the symbol A. A single element can have more than one mass number. For instance, oxygen has mass numbers of 16, 17, and 18. These naturally occurring isotopes of oxygen all have the same number of protons, but different numbers of neutrons. It is sometimes convenient to represent different isotopes of an element using a nuclear notation consisting of the element symbol, with the atomic number as a subscript, and the mass number as a superscript. How many protons and neutrons are there in cobalt-60? Correct. There are 27 protons and 33 neutrons. The three isotopes of hydrogen have special names, ordinary hydrogen, deuterium, and tritium. A particular isotope of an element is sometimes also referred to as a nuclide. Most isotopes familiar to us in our daily lives are stable. However, some isotopes are unstable. Their nuclei decay spontaneously while emitting energetic particles or rays. These unstable isotopes are called radioisotopes or radionuclides. The decay of radionuclides was discovered in 1896 by Henri Becquerel. Shortly afterward, Marie Curie coined the term radioactivity to describe the phenomenon. There are three types of radiation associated with radioactive decay, alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. Alpha and beta radiation can be deflected by charged plates, but gamma radiation is unaffected by charged plates. Alpha radiation consists of relatively massive, positively charged particles, similar to helium nuclei, with two protons and two neutrons. Beta radiation consists of both negatively and positively charged particles. Negatively charged beta particles are indistinguishable from electrons. Positively charged beta particles, which are the same size as their negatively charged counterparts, are known as positrons. Gamma radiation consists of photons that are similar to X-rays, but have higher energies. Because photons have no charge, they are unaffected by the charged plates. Radionuclides are unstable for several reasons. They have too many total nucleons, they have too many protons, they have too many neutrons, or they have too much energy. A radionuclide with too many nucleons can get rid of four nucleons by emitting an alpha particle. This alpha decay can be illustrated by a nuclear equation showing the parent nuclide and the resulting daughter nuclide. Note that, in a nuclear equation, both the number of nucleons and charge are always conserved. Also note that for an alpha decay, the mass number of the daughter nuclide is always four less than the parent nuclide. Americium-241 is an alpha emitter used in smoke detectors. The alpha particles ionize air molecules in a chamber, producing a tiny current, which is sensed by the detector. When smoke particles enter the chamber, they disrupt the current, thereby setting off the alarm. A radioisotope with too many neutrons can reduce that number by one by emitting a negative beta particle from its nucleus. During this process, a neutron is converted to a proton. Therefore, the atomic number of the daughter nuclide is one greater than that of its parent, although the total number of nucleons remains the same. 
a radioisotope with too many protons can reduce that number by one by emitting a positron from its nucleus. During this process, a proton is converted to a neutron. Therefore, the atomic number of the daughter nuclide is one less than that of its parent, although the total number of nucleons remains the same. Another type of particle, called a neutrino, is also given off during beta decay. It is much like a photon in that it has no charge, no measurable mass, and travels at the speed of light. Neutrinos come in two varieties, a regular neutrino, which is emitted with a positron, and an antineutrino, which is emitted with a negative beta particle. If a nucleus becomes excited due to an energetic collision, or more commonly immediately following radioactive decay, it sheds the excess energy by emitting one or more gamma rays. In the process of gamma decay, the atomic number and mass of the parent nucleus do not change. High energy gamma rays emitted following the decay of cobalt-60 are used to sterilize medical materials such as bandages. Because of the penetrating power of the gamma radiation, the items can be sterilized after being packaged. Radionuclides decay randomly, but at a characteristic rate. The decay activity of a radionuclide is expressed as the number of disintegrations per unit time. The half-life of a radionuclide is defined as the time it takes for half of the particle amount of the radionuclide to decay. Each radionuclide has a characteristic half-life that may range from a fraction of a second to billions of years. The half-life of uranium-238 is 4.5 billion years, about the age of the Earth. How much uranium-238 was there in the Earth when it was formed? Correct. There was about twice as much uranium-238 when the Earth was formed as there is today.